I stated that this tear behaves very differently than this tear. And I suggested that in abandoning ACL repair, through the old literature, that we threw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm happy to report the results of a meta-analysis that we recently submitted that confirmed my hunch that proximal tears are reparable. When we divided the historic literature by tear type, we found that proximal tears, in red, had much better outcomes than mixed tear groups. So, according to the data, the conclusion back then should have been that ACL repair does work, but only for proximal tears. The benefits of suture anchor approach are numerous. Most importantly, in my mind, it's simple, intuitive, and it works. It's technically straightforward and minimally invasive. The vented swivel lock anchors optimize the biology of healing. It's biomechanically sound. By using two anchors, one in each bundle, it spreads out the ligament anatomically. It's easily expandable to include the internal brace. And finally, it burns no surgical bridges, being easily converted to a recon if it happens to fail. We've recently published the technique, <clears throat> and there are also multiple resources on the Arthrex.com website. Here's how I do it. After confirming the proximal tear and acceptable tissue quality, I get, begin with a distal pass into the AM bundle with number two suture using a fast pass scorpion. I then alternate with each limb, creating a banel type stitch going proximally and exiting towards the wall, as you see there. We'll repeat it then with, for the PL bundle, here seen with the blue stitch. With the knee at 90, the AM bundle is fixed, and then with the knee at 115 degrees, the PL bundle is fixed. It's anatomic, strong, and stiff, as you can see plainly. When I'm concerned about tissue quality, age, or activity level, I borrow from Gordon's work and add the internal brace to reinforce things. Here we're starting with the placement of a preloaded AM anchor. A knit and all passing wire from a straight micro suture lasso is then used to retrieve the fiber tape that is shuttled down through the ACL and anchored distally with another swivel lock into the proximal tibia. Here again, you can see an anatomic construct. <clears throat> Our short-term follow-up on the first 11 patients consecutive showed excellent outcomes in 91% of patients. We're currently assembling the data for the midterm follow-up, and there appears to be no deterioration in outcomes. All told, I've performed over 80 isolated ACL repairs using these techniques and continue to run at over 90% successful outcomes with dramatically faster recoveries than with reconstructions. However, I don't think this procedure should simply be judged by its failure rate. It should be evaluated as, the, as to the whole patient experience. And to that end, we've recently completed a study where we compared 50 repairs to 50 recons. As to the three-month experience of the patient, the paper details what we knew to be true, that repair patients do much better. We found that repair patients regain their range of motion earlier, they achieve full range of motion much earlier than recons, and that's regardless of whether you add the internal brace. <clears throat> and in addition, the procedure is quicker and the complications are fewer. It certainly seems like the idea that less could be more is catching on as this past year as more patients are asking me and my volume is increasing dramatically. There are obviously still a lot of questions to ask and to answer. And in the last minute, I'd like to share with some of the latest research. We proposed and validated a new classification scheme for ACL tears on MRI, modifying Sherman's to include five types. Looking at over 350 acute tears in adults, we found that fully 16% of the tears are type 1, and 27% of the tears are type 2. So it's not quite as rare as everyone thought it was. We also looked at over 250 acute tears in children and found a similar distribution, although this varied significantly by age, with the younger children mostly being distal avulsions. We then analyzed 123 of my ACL patients to see, given a certain tear type on MRI, how often could I repair it? If the patient had a type 1 tear on MRI, I was able to repair it 88% of the time, as seen in red. If they had a type, two repair, or a type 2 tear in yellow, I could repair it 46% of the time. And if they had a type 3 tear seen in green, I could repair it only 12% of the time. But these data are extremely important.
because it allows us to make some fast calculations to determine that close to 80,000 patients annually in the United States alone could be potential candidates for ACL primary repair. Patients like these two teenage girls who both had successful repairs and recovered in a fraction of the time had they had reconstructions. <laughs> 